take a look at a turf pest that we don't often think about until later in the season. Joining me today is Dr. Tom Royer, our extension entomologist and IPM specialist. Tom, thanks for joining us again here on Oklahoma Garden. Well, thank Garden. you for inviting me, Kim. I always appreciate coming out here. Recently, we were talking about our turf pests, the white grubs mm -hmm. that we have in our turf. And I know that that's a very broad sort of general term that right. describes a lot of beetle larvae. Which species are really our greatest concern here? Well, the ones that we deal with in uh, Oklahoma are one that we call the southern mass chafer, which is also known as the annual white grub, uh, the Japanese beetle, um, which is a, a, a grub as well. And then there's about five or six or maybe even eight species of May and June beetles mm -hmm. uh, that attack turf as well out of the 70 that, are, that exist in Oklahoma. But the term white grub is a descriptive term of the immature stage of any of these beetles um, that uh, like to feed, live under the soil and feed on uh, the roots of uh, turf grasses. And what kind of damage do they tend to cause in our turf? They just are always chewing on the uh, roots of the turf mm -hmm. and so as they're pruning off those roots and feeding on them uh, it can sometimes cause the turf to be less healthy because it can't take up the nutrients and water that it needs to remain healthy and sometimes you'll notice a real problem occur if uh, in the fall when the Bermuda grass is starting to slow down or during the summer when uh, the turf needs lots of water and it's transpiring a lot and if you've got a, a grub problem, you'll start noticing that the turf seems to be uh, having drought problems, mm -hmm. uh, even though you're watering it. You know, you're putting yeah. a lot of water on it, it's it still looks healthy. like it's having a problem. And you mentioned we see a lot of this in the fall, but there's cultural practices and other things we could do now to start to address I think this. so. I think the, the key is to try and do as much prevention as possible mm -hmm. so that you don't have a problem. Um, uh, things that you can do during the, the season is what probably what you preach every week uh, mm -hmm. on the show do really good horticultural practices uh, don't over fertilize a lawn because anytime you over fertilize it that makes it more attractive to these beetles of coming course. in uh, and the same with over watering it um, in fact one of the strategies you can use is when we have a heavy beetle flight occurring or maybe uh, a, a homeowner notices that there's a lot of beetles banging against their walls at yeah. night mm -hmm. um, maybe cut back on the water a little bit because it might make it just a little bit less attractive for those beetles to be able to come in and lay their eggs. Um, the other thing that, uh, because these beetles are banging into windows, they're attracted to light. Yeah. So any outside landscaping lights that you have, one of the ways to maybe get around that is to change them to a yellow light that's less attractive to the beetles. Other control strategies that we can try for managing, certainly there's some biological controls. There is. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people have to keep in mind that they have to be patient and yeah. uh, the expectations are you're not going to get 100% control. It's going to take a longer period of time. But um, if, you, if you don't want to be applying something every year, that's a, a maybe a way to, to keep populations down. Um, there's natural enemies, of course. Uh, uh, there's, a, 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 there's a couple of different families of wasps that like to attack the grubs in the soil and they'll actually get down there and attack them and, and mm -hmm. parasitize them. A lot of people don't like seeing that when the adults are flying around, they don't like yeah. that. They get kind of nervous about it. And uh, there's not really anything you can do to manage that anyway. But uh, there are commercial products available uh, that include uh, um, uh, nematodes. Mm -hmm. um, I think people need to be pretty sure that they're getting the right one. My understanding is that one type of nematode, which is uh, Steiner Nema, which is a really common one that you can purchase, um, doesn't work as well on grubs as it works on other insects, but there's okay. another type called heterorhabditis, and mm -hmm. if you look for that particular one, um, it apparently works better on grubs. And then you have to follow the directions to make sure you get them spread on the lawn and get them established and, right. and create conditions that allow them to, to, to grow. Okay. Um, you have some disease agents There's as well. disease agents, there's some fungi, uh, Bavaria bassiana is something okay. that can be purchased, um, and it can <clears throat> have an effect on them. Uh, and then if you have Japanese beetle uh, mm -hmm. larvae particularly, but um, you can use something called uh, Papilla japonica, which is also known as uh, milky disease. Mm -hmm. And it works 
more effectively on Japanese beetles, but it will work on some of the other grubs that might be in the lawn as well. And these we apply much like a chemical, they come in yeah, a form that we mix exactly. into water and apply like Yeah, you have to follow the directions size. specifically to get them distributed on the lawn. So of course timing is very critical. Timing is critical. But you've also been looking at timing our chemical applications yes, as yeah. well. Yep. And this has been some of the research you've been doing. What have you found through that research with, with relation to timing our chemical applications? Well, what we found is that Oklahoma is blessed with a lot of different grubs. Um, you're from uh, up farther north in, right. in bluegrass country, and the, the, the most common grub up there is the annual white grub, which is a year-long white grub. Mm -hmm. um, here in Oklahoma, the, we have about eight species of May and June beetles that are very common in turf. Mm -hmm. and they fly starting in late March. Mm -hmm. One species will start flying in late March. We have another species that doesn't start flying until mid-August okay. into September. Well, that's a broad time to try yeah. and figure out when you would want a time in a, 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 a grub application. So what we did was we looked at the emergence patterns of all these beetles over the course of time and then tried to figure out when the absolute best time to make one application so that we're not continually applying things all year and get the most effect. And we found that right now in like mid-June from maybe the first week in June through the uh, first of July is probably an optimum time mm -hmm. to be putting a grub application down if you have a problem. And this is because of the life cycle of the grubs, yes. right? The, mm -hmm. the May beetles t mm -hmm. have a two-year life cycle a lot of times. so. Uh, and because they're flying early, some of them are going to be laying eggs early, some of them are going to be laying eggs late. So this is just a time when we can catch the early ones that have already laid their eggs and the, the grubs are still pretty small. And we have one and of those. Yes, we do. We'll take a look at, so we want to be targeting wanna, these really young grubs. Right, we want to target them when they're that small and we don't want to target them when they're this big. Mm -hmm. And that's when we tend to notice them more, of yes. course, when they're really yeah. large and when causing a lot of When they're large and causing trouble. lots of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a time that would, would be perfect to get them. Uh, and the chemicals that are available for control now will continue to have residual activity so that any beetles that are emerging later in laying eggs, it will still control them. So right now is a perfect time to be treating for them if you're going to use a grub treatment with uh, many of the products that are available. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and sharing some of your research findings. I appreciate it very much.